Hello and welcome to this video on creating some fun, weird, and at times unexpectedly unpleasant homebrew. Beer Puritans and those who adhere to Reinhitzgebot will only add water, malt, barley, and yeast to their beer. This does offer many options and varieties, particularly the differences in beers that are more traditional. But there are so many more options out there. With this in mind, let's start with a beer flavoured with oranges. The addition of oranges is not so strange, and in fact there are a number of craft and mini breweries that make a very compelling orange wheat beer. Historically, the creation is also not that unusual. Fortunately for the home brewer, and even a small brewery, this kind of recipe is not so different from a regular wheat beer. The only major deviation is the addition of the zest of a number of oranges. As you are adding a somewhat noticeable flavour, you do need to take a little more time and care with your hops as well. Now for a strawberry wheat beer. Strawberry beer is similar to orange beer in that it is based on a wheat beer, but also that it is largely the addition of an extra ingredient. Unlike the orange recipe, this is somewhat easier, with less focus on worrying about the hops and fermentation. Where with the orange flavour, you get an otherwise normal looking beer with a noticeable orange flavour, but not one that's overwhelming. With the strawberry wheat beer, this is something that's a little bit different, and where it's different is in the recipes we have tried so far, there was always a noticeable reddish to pink colour. Some of the original recipes that we tried say this should not be as obvious as we have found, and your mileage may vary. What if we then take this idea a step further? Bacon infused beer. And this might be where we start to rile up the Puritans. The key here is not to use actual bacon directly in the beer, nor to use a lightly flavoured ale. A stout or porter is called for when doing this, otherwise the flavours are all kinds of wrong. There are two approaches we have seen and tried, each with strengths and weaknesses. One is to use supermarket or other commercial supplies of bacon bits. These have a strong flavour, and some are real bacon, while others are soy flavoured pieces. The caveat to that is that they often have a relatively high salt content and can at times be particularly noticeable in the beer in unpleasant ways. The advantage is, is that you can use these to dry hop your beer. The second is a different approach, and it uses an alcohol, either ethanol or a complementary spirit to extract the flavour of bacon. This should be done slowly and in a very cold environment like a fridge. Doing it this way separates a large part of the grease and you can take this away. You then add the alcohol-based extract as an essence in the secondary fermentation, and you don't get that greasy flavour and mouth feel. Of course, you need to be both confident and comfortable in extracting the flavours with alcohol to do it this way, and to be a particular fan of whatever you're using to extract that flavour. For example, if you don't like flavoured spirits, this may not work. If you have objections to using animal products, it may not work, and if you aren't familiar with the process of extracting, you may not be able to do it properly. This won't necessarily end in failure, but it won't be as successful. If bacon is not to your taste, then what about seawater? There is salt flavoured caramel, so why not try it in beer? There are certain similarities between caramel and malting. Unfortunately, there is no way to create a beer from seawater directly. Salt water will simply not allow the yeast to survive and thrive. Further, the impact on flavour is almost impotable for nearly everyone, and unpalatable for all. This means you need to adjust the flavour with salt after the primary fermentation, and likely only before you are going to bottle or keg. This is somewhat difficult. We've yet to achieve much success in this regard, but it's something you may want to explore. Finally, tea-flavoured beer. 
In this case, we've found that our preference is not just for any tea, but specifically Earl Grey tea. The combination of slight citrus tones, caramel and malt smell is somewhat unique. In combination with the other flavours, it's particularly worthwhile. Like the seawater or salt flavoured beer, this is added at the point of bottling or kegging. Admittedly, it is a tiny amount, but it has an impact by far disproportionate to that volume. You can obviously try other flavours of tea. Largely everything from green tea through to black tea. White tea tends to not work as well as the flavour is very quickly overwhelmed. Herbal teas are also able to work, but again you need to be aware of choosing something that has just a little bit of punch behind it, otherwise it won't survive being added to the beer very well, and there won't be any point to it. These examples of ways to deviate from the norm when brewing are just a few examples, and there are many more out there, some far more successful commercially than others, and a noteworthy point when trying to do this is try not to put the entire batch of beer to one particular experimental purpose. You're best off splitting it amongst multiple, smaller batches and trying these. Even if you can't scale up an experimental batch successfully, growing it in smaller quantities but successfully is better than wasting a large quantity on a failed lead. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions that you have below.